Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm very excited. I have a special guest, a dear friend of mine named Neo. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here. My pleasure and honor. <laughs> So we were talking a lot this morning about values within a community. I had a lot of you write on the last podcast like, well, what if you're following your highest excitement? Shouldn't you just be able to do whatever you want? And like, how do we operate within a community dynamic where there's safety, within relationship dynamics where there's safety? Is everyone just allowed to like do complete relationship anarchy, even though they've decided to have these agreements? Like, what, it, what is the real ultimate truth here? Um, so... Neo and I talk about these kind of things a lot. We both lead communities, and we were messaging each other back and forth this morning, just like these fire messages, like, what about this, and what about that, and asking each other all these deep questions, and then mm -hmm. he was like, we should make a podcast about this, and I'm like, I literally am about to make a podcast. Let's just do this. Yes. So then 15 minutes later, he comes over. Yes. First off, so you guys know, Neo is a coach uh, in internal family systems. It's called IFS. I totally forgot to introduce you. I'm sorry. Uh, so this is why he's talking about in his own therapy with clients. And also he has a therapist. So there's a lot of therapy happening around here. It's great. We're all exploring the dynamics of our inner worlds, right? And how we interact with each other. There is also something we talk about with values versus preferences. So can mm -hmm. you break this down for people? Like, mm -hmm. I think people, they need these, like, they literally need, like, definitions yes. of what these things mean. And then I want to go back to the highest excitement thing, because this is a lot of the community mm. that I talk yeah. about, like... Mm -hmm. Try and define yeah. what a value is. Value would be the thing that motivates our behavior And when we are not aligned with our values, our emotional guidance system would, uh, like a red light coming when the engine is not working properly, would come up. Meaning there will come a sense of guilt, a sense of shame, or worthlessness, and so on. For example, if one holds a value of truth and then that person lies, he would feel negative emotion or would feel bad. Like right. he's out of his own alignment. Exactly. So if values are like what create alignment for you within your reality. Yes. Yes. And when people st um, stray away from their value system, their emotional system would indicate that. There's something for you to pay attention. Yeah. So like for me, a value would be like safety. I need to feel emotionally safe with everyone that I'm close to. Mm -hmm. And if I'm feeling unsafe and I'm still choosing to engage in a relationship with this person or a connection, I'm acting outside of my own value system. Which is also my definition of a shadow or, 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 or darkness. For example. Is a person acting outside of their own personal value system? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so preference, I would rather eat vanilla rather than chocolate. That would be a preference. But it's not bringing it's someone out of alignment with their own truth yes okay yes and I, I will do some work to get it even more precise so like for instance in this situation we were all at sunset there was a bunch of friends we're in the water we're swimming and the topic of open relationships comes up and each one of us there was probably five mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. maybe six where we were like uh, talking about oh we have explored openness and now we are choosing that monogamy is what we want and blah 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 and Neo was the only one in the group that was like actually I'm still into openness like I'm still exploring this so in my mind that is a preference that is mm -hmm. not like a value that's not something that would like bring me out of alignment with my personal truth if we hang out and you're in an open relationship yes 100% so I just want, I'm, we're educating the peoples. Yes, and, th and thank you for clarifying and distilling what I'm trying to say and articulating it in a better way. Yeah, this is my human design. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I literally can just break it down for people. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to talk about the highest excitement, there is a huge community of people who, you know, really love Bashar. I also love Bashar. Likewise. Uh, so, um, but, you know, I also love a lot of other spiritual teachers. And I think the point is to uh, take in all the information, not just from one source, and come to your own personal truth. Like what feels aligned within your body. So for me, the idea of following your highest excitement is something that comes from Bashar a lot. He's preaching this, you know, for 40 years now. And, or 30 years, whatever. And so it's like he 
some people can get very focused in on this very one point. Okay, I just need to follow my excitement throughout the whole world. But also Bashar talks about how we are the masters of limitation. So like literally we come into the 3D dimension in order to have certain limitations put on us so that we can grow and we choose these limitations. So like for instance, if you didn't have the limitation of gravity, you would just literally fly away. And if we didn't have a lot of these limitations, we might have we might have just stayed in spirit, you know, like we're here to grow. And so for me, having certain, I, so someone wrote a comment on my last podcast saying, well, if Faraday was just following his highest excitement and these women were just following their highest excitement, then aren't they all just working in alignment, like with their, like their own values, basically? Or like, basically, did they not do anything wrong? Like, are they just doing whatever? Everyone's just doing whatever. And so I wrote back like, well, it's, if someone is what, there's actually a term for this called solo poly, solo poly. Like, so you're polyamorous, but you are your own primary partner. Highly recommend to Google this if you haven't heard of this. And this is basically like, I just do whatever I want. I'm not in, um, I'm not responsible to anyone emotionally or with any agreement frameworks. I'm in with an agreement framework within myself. And so whatever is true for me in that moment is what I'm doing. If you're choosing to be in a framework with someone else in a relationship and you have decided here is our agreements, here are the things that we're choosing in order to have a foundation, to create safety, to build something together, in my opinion, the value is to honor that. At any moment, you can change that framework, you can choose to leave the framework, but if you're agreeing to operate within this framework and then you just actively go against it, you're not only going against your own value system, but you're hurting the person that you made this agreement with because they have opened their hearts and their bodies and like created this trust that you're just actively like cutting a knife through, like, fuck you, I'm gonna go do whatever I want. And then with my ex, he actively was just like, and I don't even think it's that big of a deal. Like, why, why are you getting upset? You know? And I was like, what? <laughs> so, um, that would be betrayal and abandonment. Yes. Thank you. And this I loyalty. I also find it interesting that some people who haven't understood or they haven't really operated with an open dynamics, like open relating, they think they think it's just solo poly, which is basically just do whatever you want. And it's like, no, the, the point of openness is that, you know, within standard monogamy, you have all of these established frameworks of your limitations. Like basically you only sleep with each other in monogamy. You don't, you know, you don't do like society, religion, they have programmed us. So it's just kind of this built in system, that framework that people are operating in. When they leave the, that framework of a monogamy, they think, oh, it's just a free-for-all. And it's like, no, no, no. The thing that creates the safety is, the only thing that really creates the safety is the agreements that you make with your partner. Boundaries. Your boundaries, your limitations is like, this is, this is, these are the things that are going to create safety for us. And if someone breaks that, it's really like, then you can't trust anything. Then that is betrayal. That is just as bad as someone cheating on you within a, a monogamous dynamic. If anything, it's even it hurts even more because it was like, you could have literally had it all. All you needed to do was communicate. You know, we're in a fucking open relationship. Disrespect. Yeah, it's like disrespectful. Like, I really gave you so much, or not gave, I didn't give it, like we chose so much freedom. And also I get, chose to trust this person within all this freedom. And I think that's the thing that feels disrespectful is like, you could have just broken up with me. You could have communicated that you wanted to shift the dynamic you know, like all these things, but to operate within the shadows. Be accountable, that's what was your expectation. Yeah, and to, yeah, and to choose not to be accountable to anything and then to act like it wasn't a big deal and then to try and shift the dynamic without communication to a full polyamorous relationship, like when I'm away, <laughs> when I'm not even in the country, none of these things are okay for me. And this is where I'm like, how would you respond to someone when they're like, oh, this is just them following their highest excitement. Like, what would you say? Like, how do, how do we operate within a tribal or a community setting if everyone is just completely breaking agreements and doing whatever the fuck they want and then just claiming, well, it was my highest excitement, you know? So if I would have this person in front of me, then I would ask this person, okay, so what is your perspective about boundaries? What do we imagine that person would say if we were a play? If I was Friday? No, if you were the person that says, just follow your highest excitement. Oh, um, <laughs> it's so outside my operating mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. that I'm like, I don't like, 
like the idea of putting myself in that person's shoes mm. is causing me um, discomfort. Yeah, anxiety. Like mm-hmm. because when you when you say like nothing matters, then really nothing matters. And I really believe that we choose what matters, mm. yes. and then that's the only thing that really creates value and meaning in our life. And if you're just like nothing matters, do whatever you want. Chaos. It's just yeah, chaos theory. Mm-hmm then everyone is just hurting everyone all the time and no one's safe. So your body never can, like that's what my body literally experienced Mm -hmm. was this feeling of like, Mm -hmm. oh, it's not safe, Mm -hmm. you know, because at any moment anything can change and Mm -hmm. people have no, they're not trying to protect each other's hearts. They're not really, Mm -hmm. they're not really loyal to each other Mm -hmm. or showing up for each other. It's Mm -hmm. just like me first, Mm -hmm. like caveman style, like me first, what I want goes. Okay, bye, you know? Yeah, Uh, yeah. And also, from my experience, so there are different layers or, or flavors of excitement. For example, what if my highest excitement is to kill someone because oh. I'm angry? I'm very excited about it. Uh, the sense of revenge and then seeing him bleeding in front of my face, blah, 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 blah. I really don't like violence. Right. <laughs> me neither. At the same time, there's a part of me that when he's very, very angry, he fantasizes those things, right? And then what I would do is I would allow him to fantasize and feel the full spectrum of emotion. And <coughs> so, yeah, what if this part has that highest excitement within him? Should I do it? Wait, so why do you let yourself fantasize about that? What does experiencing the full spectrum of emotion do for you? How is it positive? Because some people would mm. be like, don't even think about that. So the people say, don't even think about it. They basically say, don't look at, th- don't look at this inner truth that you have. Meaning, suppress and repress. That's most of the world. Of course. (laughs) That's why we live in an emotional dark age. (laughs) So, uh, also in therapy and also within myself, I had this therapy session with some girl uh, like a few months ago. Then I saw she got betrayed, very (laughs) severely betrayed, and have been painted in black. Meaning, she has been blamed for something that she didn't do. Yeah. And I saw the part in her that is angry, that is rageful. On the one side, on the other side, I see a part that is judging the anger and basically wanting her to be identified with being a good person. With being a good person. But this part here has emotion. And if that emotion is not being expressed and felt, this part would go more into the shadow aspect of it. So basically it needs to be felt so that it, and feeling it is actually healthy. Yes. I'm just I, I'm really sharing this with people because some people don't think that they don't yes. realize this. Yes, yes. Like for me, even recently connecting to this healthy anger of this betrayal mm-hmm. from my last relationship mm-hmm. and also just so much bullshit that he has put me through. And I'm just like, I think at first I was in shock, but then I, I didn't want to connect to the healthy anger mm-hmm. because there's this part, especially as a woman, it's like, oh, just be love and light. And oh, my God. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck you <laughs> that's how mm-hmm. i feel now mm-hmm. and it feels really good it feels very yeah. empowering exactly and, and part of the reason why it feels so good is because the resistance towards the anger has come down so, yeah i'm so just letting the energy flow through in, instead of it being stuck yeah and then if it's it is stuck it will fester and if it would fester it will lead to resentment and that's the route to hell yeah, and I think mm. I think the point is to let the anger out in a way like you, we were talking about because I was like, well, how is it a safe thing to let this anger out? And you were saying the other day, like, as long as you don't do it in a violent way, yes. you know. And I was like, okay, so let's talk about what that means. So what does it mean to let your anger out in a violent way? Okay, you were like, close the the windows, scream scream in your house, you know, like, you know, do whatever you need to do to speak up for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but what's what's a violent way? And it's like, well you know telling the world that you hate your part like my ex is like actively saying saying about me like i hate her she's a narcissist like all this stuff and i was like i wouldn't i wouldn't do that to i wouldn't for me that is violence in words Mm -hmm. and that for me is crossing a boundary Mm -hmm. and also how what would you i just think it's important for people to know that the limitations of this as well so Mm -hmm. they're not running around being like i'm angry so i can do whatever the fuck i want exactly so what are the limitations like what 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 is the limitations of like not using it in a violent way like give some examples of what would violence in that way like i guess like creating more harm right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or doing something to harm the person Mm -hmm. because you're angry but speaking up for yourself Mm -hmm. and telling the world like what or telling your friend group telling your family speaking up for how you like how i was sexually molested i went to the cops i reported it like speaking up is really important and it's a healthy way to use your anger 
also setting boundaries is a really healthy way to use your anger. And I don't know, do you have any other ones? Yes. So uh, let me give an example of how with a previous ex of mine, I basically what happened with it, an argument about something, and then at a certain point, I saw the polarity within her that there is anger and there is another part in her that is judging the anger. So that part is not being seen and understood. And I saw that if that part will not be welcomed in our dynamic, our <laughs> argument will not be resolved. <clears throat> so I was able to manage expectations within my own parts and letting her know, okay, listen, I mirrored back to her what I'm seeing and my invitation for her was close the doors, close the windows and allow your angry part to fully come out at me. Curse me, blame me, say whatever you want. <clears throat> and why did I do it? Is because if I wouldn't do it, that's it. It's, it's going to be stuck. And at a certain point... Um, so you're saying if you didn't create that space in that moment for her to just to really feel it, mm -hmm. then it would come out later in like more shadow ways, like resentment or... She manipulation. Would manipulate, she would snap at you. Like exactly. The next time you got in a fight, she'd bring it up. You know, like exactly. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't really let it go. Exactly. So, so you I, I opened a safe space. I was just going to say, did it feel safe for you to receive that from her when yes. she was angry? Yes. I was basically welcoming her violence. And why is that okay? Because I've set the, set the stage for it. Mm -hmm. There's an agreement. It was not okay if that agreement wasn't there. And that agreement and the boundaries is what created safety in order for her to fully embrace whatever she feels. So there is that. And then this is a point I want to share about like, you know, there's times where I really allow myself to feel this anger and, you know, in different situations with men recently where I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how does he think that this is okay or something? And I will share it with you. And you've made a point about like, yeah, you could send him this message, but he probably is not going to receive it in the way that you want. What I recommend, like you were giving me a recommendation, like, ask him is he open for you to being very blunt and like just basically creating that container mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be like violence or like anything super negative but it's just like if you have some anger or some like righteous anger that you need to like get out and you're like this is crossing my boundaries or i didn't i don't like how you're treating me or whatever it's best to ask the person like are you open to receiving this because if they say yes then it's like you, they're they're buying into the the situation of like okay we're going to be super honest with each other right now mm -hmm. we're going to let this energy out <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and the subtext of asking can I be very honest with you is can I say something that will potentially trigger you and mm -hmm. are you open and willing to face it this is the subtext mm -hmm. basically okay so going back to the excitement the high, so if someone said like you were saying like something about the boundaries of, mm -hmm. s can we just go back to this point? I, I love our yeah, yeah. conversation, but I want to finish this one thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, about, f okay, so different spiritual teachers or people or perspectives will give you different ideas. And then what I do is I take on the idea and then I match it in the puzzle pieces in my conceptual reality. So for example, follow your joy or follow your bliss, or follow your highest excitement. If it is not, if that concept is not merging together with other concepts in the system, people could use follow your highest excitement to rationalize <laughs> behaviors that are not aligned with their own value system. For example, I wanted to go, I'm in a relationship, and I wanted to go and fuck that girl over there, even though it's breaching the contract with the dynamic that I have with my current partner, and then I, I rationalize it. Yeah, but I was following my highest excitement. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is, would you want somebody to cheat on you because they're following their highest excitement? I assume not. If you say yes, then that's a very tough situation because, <laughs> <laughs> because if I was in your shoes, there would be no safety in society at all because everybody could do whatever they want all the time. I feel like some people are operating from such a disconnection to their felt body, like mm -hmm. which means like the sensations going through your body which are telling you whether you're safe, whether you feel good, whether you want to be in the situation. 
they are so disconnected from their bodies mm -hmm. and they're operating from their heads that they're like, well, I guess logically this makes sense. So let's do it like this, even though like their bodies are screaming and just like, I don't feel good. This doesn't feel good. Oh my God. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And they're so disconnected from that, from their body and their emotions. <coughs> so they can act out in those ways. Also to me, logically, it doesn't make sense. Because again, would you want people to cheat on you? I don't know. Of course not. And that's why like, I show up how I, like, I really, for me, integrity is like showing up how you, how you want other people to show up around you. Mm -hmm. And that's why like, in this situation, I was telling you, like, even after we broke up, I was acting within my integrity because I was like, I want to always look back on the situation, feeling within myself, not by anyone else's standard, but within my own standards, my own values that I acted within my alignment. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would want back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what creates safety for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you feel that we... Are we done with that topic of highest excitement or no? Or is there more clarity needed to be found there? Um, I just... I feel like people need more tools mm -hmm. because like right now within a lot of the spiritual communities that I am sharing my information with, mm -hmm and connected to a lot of them don't have that many tools of like like that's why earlier i was like what is a value mm -hmm. well, how is that different than a preference like literally just this foundational education because all they've had really s so far is a lot of bashar a lot of just follow your highest excitement mm -hmm. and so i want to give them more like the thing with only operating from the the information of follow your highest excitement is um this within a tribal setting i feel like needs a lot more ac accountability within how does this affect other people mm -hmm. so like this is another thing i want to educate people on is like are you operating within your value system is there something where these are my close people this is my community Yes, I have my own preferences. I have my own values. One, does my values align with my community? And then, like, am I operating within a, a, my integrity of protecting not just my own preferences and my own highest excitement, but am I doing my best to protect everyone else's that I care about? And if those two things come into conflict, am I willing to slow down on following my highest excitement long enough to check in with the people that I care about and see if there's some way that I can create more safety for them while I follow my highest excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think this is the, the interesting point is like, like I choose to have friends in my life that have my back because it's who they are and it's actually part of their values. It's not like they're doing it for me. Um, if they were doing it, for me then that would backfire they would create resentment they would eventually flip the other way and that's why it's really interesting in my situation with this is like because it's just like this is why we've been like comparing stories on these things is all of this is an opportunity for us to really understand our own values and understand the values of the people that we're operating in within our community because I show up and I give a hundred percent to all of my relationships and I have their back and I like, I show up within my value system. And what I'm realizing in my dynamic, and I think this is what you were realizing within yours is like, you're like checking in, like, are, are we having the same values? Like, are, would you show up in the same way? Like, cause I would show up for you in this way, but now I'm in the situation where I need support. And I find that really interesting because <laughs> Most of the times in my life, I'm leading a community. I am the one who's the leader of the friend group. You know, there's people just naturally have your back because you're the one organizing everything and making things happen and you're the life of the party. But what happens when you need backup? Uh -huh. Like, are the people that are there for when things are good, are they there for when you actually need them? Yeah. And, and I have a, a pretty strong trigger with that. It happened with my previous ex. Mm -hmm. The trigger that basically said, if you do not want me in my worst, you do not deserve to get me in my best. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And us in our worst is just being vulnerable <laughs> yes. and going through a hard time emotionally. Yes. Like, you know, again, I feel very in my integrity with how I have shown up in my last breakup and how I show up in my life. Like, I haven't done anything out of alignment. If anything, I've 
Well, the only thing I've done out of alignment maybe is to betray myself and not stick up for myself enough. <laughs> but I mean, I haven't like hurt other people in that those actions. I feel very in alignment with how I've treated people externally. So it's okay. We're back. We took a little break. Um, so now we are going to talk about, um, you know, you have these value systems, right? Like once you figure out your own value system of what's important for you, what helps you to act within your own alignment, and then you attract in people actively you can talk to them what is your values are we in alignment are we actually operating from the same system okay now there's safety because we're all feeling that these things are important whether it's loyalty true safety um what other values would you say or just giving them some examples uh could be playfulness mm -hmm. could be integrity could be comfort could be um, financials. In connection, it could be your soul mission, like having this shared value of like mm -hmm. what you want to make in the world, mm -hmm. what impact you want to create. So once you have these people within your community where you're sharing the same values, now, okay, we can build something together. And that could be, you know, we're building a life together. Maybe some of us are getting married and having kids or not getting married, whatever. You know, like you're building projects, whatever. You're, you're building on this foundation of a shared value. Now, what happens when someone acts outside of this value system within your community? So we were talking about how do we hold tribe members, the people in our community accountable when someone acts outside of a value system? Mm -hmm. So what would you say about this? I can give a story mm -hmm. that would show how um, I'm holding tribe members accountable. Mm -hmm. For example, there was a, a situation where uh, a former best friend of mine, I saw that he was lying to his ex mm -hmm. through reading text messages that he wanted me to read so I can mirror back to him what I see is happening mm -hmm. and helping to resolve a polarity within himself and find, int and find integrity and alignment. Mm -hmm. So when I was reading those texts, I basically saw that he lied. Your okay. best friend lied to his ex. Yes. Yep. Um, and immediately, it didn't feel good to me. Mm -hmm. So that was an indication that my emotional system indicating that something is out of alignment. Of your own values, right? Exactly. Yeah. And <coughs> so then I told him, do you see what is happening here? He says yes. And some protector parts in him came up. Long story short, he took accountability in front of me that he lied. Mm -hmm. And then I was telling him, okay, now I expect from you to also share with her that you lied. Like to own up to it. Exactly. Yeah. Be exactly. accountable. Exactly. And from my perception, if he wouldn't do it and not take accountability and go back into alignment, with the value of truth, then that means to me that I cannot trust him. Because he might do the same thing to you. It, it, it is only a matter of time. Yeah. And of course, it also happened mm. later on, very quickly. Not only this, I would expect the whole tribe members to hold each other accountable, also me, mm -hmm. right? So if there comes a situation when I see somebody is not in alignment with the, the, my values and by extension, by, by extension, the values of the tribe, I would expect all of them to hold the person accountable. And that is not meaning canceling him. It means to mirror back to him what they see mm -hmm. and what are their expectations and their stra standards and boundaries. And mm -hmm. if whatever tribe member chooses to not take accountability or is not able to do it, there is a problem. So that means there is a mismatch in values. So then that means I cannot trust the person. Not only that, I can also not trust people that are in a friendship with this person. Because if they choose to be in a friendship with this person, that means that they are okay with him lying. 
And if they're okay with him lying, then that means that they're okay with themselves lying. And that means it will create chaos inevitably. <laughs> just chaos everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so um, just to break this down even more, so basically what you're saying is that it's like, so say your, ex, your best friend lied to his ex, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're like, hey, you lied. And he's like, oh, fuck, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, you need to go talk to her about this. And if he didn't, that would mean that he was okay with being out of alignment with his own values. And that would mean, this is the point I want to share. If he, if your ex is do, if your best friend is doing this to someone else, then he, that means that he's going to inevitably do it to you. So mm -hmm. this is the point I want to share with people is that there may be something that your friend has done, like say they broke um, a value of theirs, say they were lying to people or they broke agreements with people, whatever, whatever it is. It is only a matter of time that they do this with you. If they don't think that there's anything wrong with this and they're acting, if they are okay with acting out of alignment within their own value system. And this is why it's super important within a community that we hold each other accountable and we say, Hey, this is not okay. Like you're acting out of alignment. Like, and the point is to, bring them back into alignment in the sense of holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I will hold you accountable that you need to own up and just take responsibility and recognize that this is a, out of alignment and to apologize and do whatever you need to do to make it right. And then you're able to be back in alignment. Yes. So basically lying created a rupture. Mm -hmm. And then my intention would be to mend this rupture. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, is the perso person willing to do it? And if he or she are willing, are they able to do it? Oh, that, the, the able part is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of people want to, like for instance, the woman who cheated on my ex with like whatever, she reached out to me and said, I want, I want to, I want to make this right. I want to apologize. And I said, well, this is what I need. I need a mediator. And then she said, I'm not able to do that. Mm -hmm. So this would be a perfect example of this, yes, right? Like yes, exactly. there has been a rupture. I w this woman is willing to, or she wants to mend the rupture, but maybe she's not able to do it in a way that is creating safety for everyone. Because for me, I don't feel safe to meet with her one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. A and part of the reason why there, there could be a willingness, but an inability to do so is because it would make them face their own shadows meaning with that girl mm -hmm. it would uh, being accountable and actually engaging in a conversation and bring clarity and trying to mend the rupture with you would mean she would need to mend the rupture within herself and in order to do it within herself means facing her own sense of shame and guilt and worthlessness that drived her to act in a way that is out of alignment with their own values. With her. So it's all, everything is within ourselves. This is mm -hmm. all one big conversation within our relationship mm -hmm. to ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting that she wanted to, she like made the effort to reach out, but then wouldn't go the mm -hmm. whole way. Like, I'm like, if you're going to do it, just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from my part's perspective, there is a part in her that values the connection with you and for her to step more into alignment mm -hmm. and with what that part believes is the true thing, the right thing to do, while another part in her <laughs> at a certain point went, fuck that, I'm out. <laughs> 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 I am not willing to face that thing over here. Even though it's like with a mediator and fully safe and like. Mm -hmm. And I can understand from her perspective, she doesn't know me as a mediator and who I am. So she, that part in her might think it's not safe, mm -hmm. right? I don't know. But also I offered other mediators too. Like it wasn't oh, okay. even just about, that. yeah, it wasn't even just about you. I was mm -hmm. like, here's multiple people you can pick from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she didn't have the ability to face her own shadow. So if... I just want to give people an example. Like if they're in a community with someone, like you're they're in a friend group, mm -hmm. someone acts out of alignment. So say, for instance, <laughs> you know, Bob and Sue mm -hmm. are dating each other. Mm -hmm. Bob cheats on Sue. Mm -hmm. And then they have a whole friend group. Mm -hmm. And Bob doesn't, doesn't want to acknowledge or own up to 
this or make make amends. Doesn't want to mend the rupture. Mm-hmm. He's just acting like nothing happened. I don't know what you're talking about and mm-hmm. everything's fine. I was just following my highest excitement and like, shouldn't everyone just be okay with this? How would you recommend the rest of the friend group to rec- to respond to the situation with Bob and Sue? First thing that I would do is I would... Change their names because it's such <laughs> funny names. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Interesting why those names I don't came know. out. <laughs> this is such an American thing like Bob and Sue. <laughs> it's like from a 1950s. Like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, yeah, but <laughs> what I would do is first of all, I would want to understand is it okay, what are the values of Bob? It could be that in his value system, it's okay to cheat. I don't know, okay, so then I would ask him, Bob, I have a question, he'll say yes, and then I ask him, if she would cheat on you, would you be okay with that? If he says yes, then <laughs> that's an incompatibility. Yeah, well, I would be like, why are you even dating then? Why aren't you guys just like friends who have sex? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and this, if it's you wanting to make the person be more aware or understand more, from my perception, if he would say, yes, cheating is okay, then I understand immediately that person is out of alignment with my values. Yeah, so then it, he can do whatever he wants, but it's not within your value system. Exactly, and not within my standards and boundaries, and then... I would choose to take my distance away from that person. You're talking about, the, so the other friends in the friend group would be like, they would check in first to see mm-hmm. if the value is aligned or if there's a misalignment. Like basically, does he want to mend the rupture or is he just completely operating in a different value system? Yes. If he wants to mend the rupture within his own self and within the, the da- dynamic with Sue, then encourage him to do this. If he is just completely operating in a different value system, then you have to check in and ask yourself, do I want to enter into chaos theory, which is just like, he's just going to do whatever the fuck he wants, not only to Sue, but to everyone involved. Mm-hmm. So the closer I get to him, I have to understand that there really isn't any emotional safety mm-hmm. and he can just do whatever he wants at any moment because he's not operating within a set value system. Yes, and there would be a price to be paid being all that person. Yeah. So this is if he says, yes, it's okay to cheat on people. Yeah. If he says, no, it's not okay, then it means that he acted out of alignment with his own value system, mm-hmm. meaning his shadow came out. Mm-hmm. And then I would ask him, okay, so it sounds to me that it is not aligned what you did. He will say yes. And then I'll start to get curious. And then I'll ask, well, would you want to explore why you did it? And basically what is the shadow that is lurking there that made you act in that way? And then I will start this whole curiosity investigation process and help the person to understand what was it within him that caused the cheating. Mm -hmm. And then in an ideal situation, Bob would become aware of the wound inside him that caused him to act from his shadow and understand the trauma that caused the wound. Mm -hmm. and then do a healing process with the trauma. And then what would happen, Bob would naturally feel the guilt and the shame and probably will start crying as a natural expression of that pain that came up in him and will take accountability and be very sorry about what happened. So if I would have seen that, that would be progress for me. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's like mending the rupture, exactly. like taking accountability. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the point that I feel like I, w- I want to share with people is like, you know, as we grow, it's a, it's, I, I'll, I'll, I'll speak from my personal experience. I have made many mistakes in my life, especially within relationships. I personally have cheated on people in re- past relationships and I fucking felt so bad about it. And I took responsibility and I did what I could to mend the rupture. So for me, it's not about making a mistake or acting out of alignment. It's what do you choose to do after that happens? Are you going to just completely run away from it? Are you going to not take responsibility? Are you going to turn around and face it and integrate? Okay, what is there to learn here? How can I mend this rupture? How can I show up in a way where 
I'm choosing to act in my integrity now from going from now going forward, you know? So at every given moment, we have the opportunity to be a better person and be a more evolved creature in this lifetime. So it's not about saying someone's evil and they need to just go away. It's like, we all make mistakes. How are we going to choose to show up acting within our own values and acting within our own integrity? And are we willing to take responsibility? I think that is like one of the biggest like badass thing a person can do is be like, yeah, I fucked up. Exactly. And a thing about ruptures in relationships, it's inevitable for ruptures to happen. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if the rupture is mended properly, it could make the connection even stronger. Kind of like a bone that is breaking when it's mended, it's stronger. Yeah, or like when you go work out, you know, and mm -hmm. your muscles, you like tear them down a little bit mm -hmm. and they get bigger and they get stronger mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. from the strain. Mm -hmm. So it's like you go through something hard, but you come out the other end mm -hmm. with something even better. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the goal is not to never have ruptures. The goal is what do we do? Do we have the tools in order to heal the rupture when they come? Are we willing to take responsibility? Are we all willing to act within our own alignment, within our own value system? Yes. So let's say, Bob understood, said sorry, all of that. Then I will check with Sue, how is she feeling? Mm. Is she, does she perceive that she's being fully witnessed for her pain and the rupture that happened? Um, let's say she says no. Then I'll get curious about it. Okay, so w what is there that from your experience is not being addressed or seen. Mm -hmm. And then she will share whatever she shares and then I will check with Bob how he responds. And it's either he'll be in a place of taking responsibility and being able to see her and meet her at her pain. And if that's the case, Sue would experience relief. And when there will be enough relief, Sue would be open up for a restoration of the connection with Bob because she will come back more into a place of trust. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're not going to date anymore, but they could come to terms where they're just like happy and chill with each other. Yes. Yes. Well, I think this is beautiful. Um, right now I need to go because I need to have another, mm. I need to do a business call mm -hmm. and then hike over to my favorite part of the island mm. this is part of my birthday celebration is um halloween party that my friends are djing at over there mm. so sounds awesome i hope that you end up coming i cool. hope so too let's see <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being on the show mm. and there's more that I we want to go into but mm. we're going to make more podcasts so yes. uh, i hope you guys all can welcome neo into the tribe and um understand that he's awesome and then we're going to just keep going um, cause I feel like so many of us need these like very defined, like touch points of like, how do we operate within a community? You know, mm -hmm. because as the spiritual community is growing around the world, we are all interacting in a way where it actually is like a tribal setting and there needs to be these frameworks so that we have safety or we could just do like complete chaos theory and just everyone fend for themselves. But that's not the community that I choose to operate in. Yep, I totally align with that. Um, and I'm hoping that your audience will get good value of this conversation. I think so. And uh, thank you for hosting me and yeah. inviting me over. Mm -hmm. and, and if you have any questions, you can always put them in the in the YouTube comments or send me a message on Instagram or send Neo a message on Instagram. I'll put his details in the comments below because uh, we want to keep the conversation going. We're super interested to hear what you think and how you feel and all the things. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.